My final guest tonight is undoubtedly one of the smartest people on TV. Susie Dent is a lexicographer, author and TV personality. She first appeared on our screens on Countdown in 1992. Well, we sort of meanders as well, which is eight. And has remained a dictionary corner for almost 30 years, where she's been joined by a host of comedians on 8 out of 10 Cats Does Countdown. Only time I could ever remember Rachel being a little bit miffed is because we spot bras sometimes, and I think... Am I asleep right now? <laughs> God, even I'm getting a sexy. <laughs> She's written 13 books and now brings us her newest work, Word Perfect. Please welcome Susie Day! Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I wasn't expecting that. But it was, well, that's what's extraordinary. It feels like you forget, it almost feels like you're the nation's English teacher. <laughs> but you've, you've quietly been in the corner just informing us about language for years. It's the best gig in the world because yeah. I don't often have to look at the camera. I just sit there with my, now with a laptop, which a lot of people disagree with, um, and just find words. I mean, honestly, it's, I'm just in my, in my element. Have you ever found yourself when you're sat next to somebody in Dictionary Corner where you... Because a lot of them are very excited to be near you. Like, um, do you know what I mean? Like I Danny Dyer, big fan of yours. Did you know oh, that? Danny was so funny. But he was... You were his crush. Did you know that? His weird crush. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I never forget. I work with Rachel Riley, so Rachel gets all the proper crushes, understandably. I get the weird crushes. <laughs> um, so I just learned to live with that. I understand it totally. And Danny, yes. I mean, Danny, the first time he came on Cats Down, as we call it, as you know, Russell, um, we... He, I, I was writing out the letters, as I always do, so nine letters come up, I would write them down. He tried to pronounce the whole thing, thinking that was the word <laughs> I was giving it. <laughs> <laughs> Only Danny could yeah, do yeah, that. Yeah. Um, but he loved it. He genuinely loved the show. Yeah. And, yes, then I was his weird crush. That's all right. And, but you've also got a book out at the minute, haven't you? Yes. And it's called Word Perfect. Um, it's all about kind of your favourite words and phrases, and it's yes. kind of one for every day of the year, isn't it? Yes. Uh, I've been just a bit of a linguistic magpie, so it was a chance for me to open up all the books that I have been, you know, jotting things down in for years and years and years, and just to say, here, I can tell you about... I don't know, stealing someone's thunder, which goes back to the nicking of a thunder-making machine by one theatre production company from another in the 18th century. Wow. I know, stuff like that. I just was... It was brilliant. I could just share it by finding the exact day that that happened. See, I love that. Like, as, as a stand-up, I always find, like, when phrases come about and your brain's like, how... Like, did anyone ever say boo to a goose? <laughs> Very good point. Uh, I don't know the answer to that one. Oh, wow. Um, I really don't know the answer to that one. But some, some of the ones where... You think they must just be an expression that never had any literal truth at all. Sometimes they do. So, like, my favourite, which always gives me goosebumps, is um, licking something into shape. Yes. Which goes back to really old belief that bear cubs are born as formless blobs and are licked into shape by their mums. <laughs> I just wow. think that's so beautiful. But that feels like a John Lewis hat, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good idea. Maybe I should sell it. Here's one, as an expert, this is okay. quite, you know, this is quite blue book. Um, but the, where's the phrase, uh, to tear a new arsehole come from? <laughs> because we know it from the context of a row, don't we? I mean, oh, phew, I'll tell you what, she taught me a new arsehole. But I've never had a row and gone, Pfft. yeah. Um, <laughs> that's exactly the kind of question that Jimmy Carr would ask me, you know, <laughs> on the show. When there's been an hour... You know how it is when we record the show, there's an hour of comedy before he gets to me. Yeah. And then he'll ask me something and I'm just like, oh, I can't think of anything funny at all. Um, and then he hits me with all his insults. <laughs> yeah, I always... I've, I always find that when, I, when I'm... I remember chatting to Rachel about this. It's sort of this weird... Because you two really take a lot of... Do you ever have those moments where you feel like going, fuck off, Jim? Yeah. Like... <laughs> Yes. Yeah. But he always tries to get me to swear, and I love swearing, and I write about swearing all the time, but it's kind of... That's my one bit of rebellion, is I won't do it. You won't no. swear? Not if you ask me to. But yet you're fascinated by swear words. I am. Because I, when, when you got your first ever dictionary... Yeah. ..you did what most people do. It's yes. when you were young. You instantly were hunting for the rude words. Yes. I went to a convent, Russ, so... Did you? Yes. Oh, wow. So, uh, looking at rude words was just about as fun as it got for a little while. Um, but they were quite innocent ones. I remember looking up... Um, this is how old I am. Fart, for example. And it was described as a minor explosion between the legs. That's, that was the definition. <laughs> when I looked it up. But, but 
And, and did you then sort of sh sort of share that knowledge? Probably. That, and that's where it I began. I probably did, but I definitely didn't look up any of the words that I would talk about today. So, do you have like a word that you just always go to that you think that's my favourite? Um, my favourite words. I have so many. I have a lot of insults. I tend to sort of bring back lots of historical insults because mm. English does them so well. And we are quite bad at looking on the positive side of life. We do kind of linger <laughs> on the sad side of life. So you could be full of gorm in the olden days. You could be gormful. You could be gruntled and couth and really and all of these things. But we've lost them all and we've only hung on to unkempt and unruly and gormless and disgruntled. Wow, that's so interesting. Because so I, I, yeah. I've often thought that. You, so you can actually be gruntled. You can be gruntled. It was P.G. Woodhouse who gave us that one, so that's a bit more recent. But you could definitely be Ruth, full of Ruth, instead of ruthless. Um, you could be wieldy and handy with a weapon. Um, you could... To, to gorm is from the Vikings, meaning to take notice. So if you were gorm-like, you had an intelligent look about you. I mean, right. there's just... All of these were around. But, yeah... So gruntled means... Like, Happy. Happy. It doesn't oh, sound it, though, does it? It has sort of like, it sounds like a bit of an onomatopoeia where you like to be like grunting. I know. You and know that, I mean? you're so good at this because that was the very first meaning centuries ago. And then P.G. Woodhouse just knocked the diss off. Um, Isn't but, there a word like, in, in the, I think it's January the 1st in yours, is it clam basil? Cram basil. Cram basil. That is one of my favourite ones. So cram basil was, I thought was perfect for New Year's Day um, when you're waking up after New Year's Eve. And cram basil in Yorkshire dialect is prematurely aged from excess drinking. <laughs> Which is perfect. But it sounds so, it just fits, doesn't it? I know, it, it really, basil. really does. Um, and other words that I love, oh, I always talk about scurry funging at Christmas time. So scurry funging is. Um, an American word, and it means running around the house and shoving stuff into cupboards, under beds and things, because you have visitors coming around. Um, <laughs> so it's the tidying up just before guests arrive. Scurry funding, Scurry funding. is exactly how it should. Yeah, it's perfect. Oh, I All love for that. Its job. Now, one of the things I love about you as well is that you're often referred to on Twitter as the leader of the opposition. <laughs> yeah. Have you noticed That's that? That's really funny. Um, yeah, I have been told. Yeah, because basically what happens, Susie puts words up, and uh, sort of without sort of explicitly uh, describing who you're talking about. Yes. You kind of leave it open. We've actually got some here. So word of the day is bloviation, 19th century. Empty rhetoric and a good deal of blah. <laughs> but that, that's clearly Boris Johnson. I'm saying nothing. OK. <laughs> and in many ways, neither is he. Um, <laughs> we've got another one here. Word of the day is stiff rump which I like, 18th century, an obstinate, disdainful individual who refuses to budge when action is needed. <laughs> who do we think? <laughs> Trump. Nice. Where are you ah. from? You live in Liverpool. That was nice. Trump. Oh, yeah. Um... What number one here? Word of the day, again, is catchphrase, oh, yeah. which is the 17th century, a follower of the political wind, one whose actions are guided entirely by the whims and desires of their boss. I'll be honest, I have no idea who that is. But I love the oh. word catch fart. Yeah, it's quite recent, that one. Uh, not, not the word. It's not recent, it's from the 17th but, century. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the tweet. But what I love about these is that, yeah, I probably will have someone in mind, but people will just use it for whomever they want to. Yes. So, you know, they, they have, like, during Brexit, uh, I might, you know, tweet an insult and then people say, oh, yes, Fleming Ramona's. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Or likewise, you know, they would apply it to the Brexiteers. So, and I've had Australian, the Australian Prime Minister comes up quite a lot. Yeah, people yeah. just find the person that they want it to fit and that's the beauty of language, really. So I don't have to apply it to anyone in particular. What's up? What's next? Are you doing a little book tour or...? Um... Um, yeah, I have... Um, well, I've done a few book tours. I also have a theatre tour. Yeah. Um, I have got... I am writing another book at the moment. So, yeah, and I've got a podcast that I do with Giles Brandreth, so we are going on tour for that as well. So there's quite a lot going on, but um, and more, hopefully more cats down next year. Yes, hopefully. nice. Ladies and gentlemen, please get up for my guest, the fantastic Susie Day. <laughs> <laughs>